Hey everyone, it's your boy Teflon John, also known as Jonathan Smith, and I'm coming to you this evening uh, with two special guests, Nelly Anderson and Antonio Scott, two close friends of mine. And tonight we're going to be talking about our feelings or how we feel about the school protests, the school shootings, and the, and the current state of uh, what our kids have to go through going to schools and the impact that the protests may or may not have, right? So we're going to take a minute and just let Nellie introduce herself, tell you more about her so you can know who, who she is. Hi, everyone. Thanks, John. Thank you for having me on this late night show. <laughs> I think we are all trying to keep this um, as leisure as possible and uh, trying to converse about these important topics. A little bit about me. Um, I am an educator by trade. And I'm really focusing on youth leadership and executive leadership training, uh, working with children, with adults, with their parents, uh, changing their minds, their habits, their thought processes so they can see different results in their lives. And I'm really passionate about wellness. So I'm combining these two because I think it's vitally important to have healthy mind and healthy body and live your best every day. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to introduce you to Antonio Scott, who is a close friend of mine, who is a brother in Christ. We just want him to introduce himself. Yes, like um, he said, Jonathan is here. Uh, I'm Antonio Scott, and um, uh, by trade, um, I'm an account manager for Pepsi. Um, uh, my natural life, but my spiritual life, I'm a minister. You know, and I feel like it should be a balance, a balance in, you know, your mind, spirit and your physical and, you know, just, you know, understanding what's going on in the world and trying to make a change and be a difference maker. Um, and my heart also goes out to children um, who didn't have much or suffer with mental illness and, you know, just the challenges from day to day. Um, that's my goal. My passion is each day to reach somebody, you know, um, my focus is no longer on, uh, quantity, but quality, you know, so the words that I speak, the things that I say, I want to make sure the seed is planted and it takes, um, root and, you know, the way things can blossom, people can change. It's like the ugly duckling stage, you know, you look one way, but later on in life with the things you go through. Um, you can be changed. Um, so that's my focus day to day. And like Nelly said, just trying to be a better person each and every day. Hey, and that's, and that's wonderful. So now you know the panel. And what we're going to do is jump right into it. Like, so I w I'm going to start with you, Nelly. Uh, how did you feel to, to see, you know, young kids, teenagers, you know, even down to uh, adolescent in elementary school, you know, uh, praying at the flagpole, showing their interest in their safety what what did that make you feel like how how did that make you feel um there are always quite conflicting feelings when things like that happen i always wonder what are uh people's motives and <clears throat> on one hand i am i'm encouraged to see young children of any age um, and adults too to be engaged to take a step, to take an action, to express what they feel, to express what they want. And I am really, really proud to live in this country who gives the freedom to do that. And not to forget that with this great freedom, um, we are given also great responsibilities that we have to keep it free and we have to keep this place safe. And I'm so saddened that these kids come together not to celebrate, you know, not to uh, celebrate their achievements, their talents, what their great are, but they're coming because we are in a very difficult time uh, when we have to make tough choices between safety and liberty and trying to see if taking away liberties, putting more laws, uh, restricting one's freedom is going to bring us safety. And these are uh, questions that, you know, have to be discussed with caution. Um, politicians will not 
let any um, drama get wasted to push certain um, agenda through. But we have responsibility as people to live this country and this um, nation for tomorrow better than is today, not more restricted and not more scary because I'm coming from a country, I'm coming from a place where there were plenty of laws that were restricted. And life gets taken, evil exists. In Europe, there might be a perfect gun control and in other places, but if you're going to take lives, you will find a way uh, to do your evil. And I'm really happy that we're discussing this because it's not um, about laws and restrictions, but it's really about mental health, family health, personal health, spiritual health, and just more than what we see coming um, in the news. That's me. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's funny that that you say that because motives like you, you wonder are people actually you know taking advantage of this moment because it's it's a huge opportunity for for most kids to actually get involved you know and and it's funny because i know that the next election that we'll have because of this issue if it's serious enough you know these votes um play a big part in the swing so i think you'll see in the current elections and the elections to come up people are going to try to play towards the actual strength of these kids and try to tell them what they want to hear but i hope in their hearts that they're taking it seriously. Because my opinion is that, you know, taking freedoms away from people or weapons away from people, like, you know, people have went, you know, hunting, you know, um, as an eight-year-old with a rifle or whatever. So I don't really think gun taking the guns away um, is the actual solution because um, we have a problem with mental health in this country. And, you know, going that route, you know, uh, Brian um, and Antonio, I just want you to um, kind of uh, elaborate on your uh, opinion on what's going on. Um, like with um, Nelly said, you know, in this country that we live in, it's a great country. Um, in spite of the the controversies that we have going on on today, you know, in today's time, um, I still say that we live in a great country, but we still, just like with anything, you know, there are flaws. Um, and especially with mental health, you know, you can't, you can't plan. You don't necessarily know everybody's mental health and what they're dealing with and their background and where they come from. And, um, you know, being that my wife works in the mental health field, um, you know, I'm able to understand it more or less, more so than many people. Um, you know, so just seeing these things happen. Um, it's up to each individual to choose what they see, see to get out of every um, tragedy, every incident, every ordeal. Um, now, it's sad to say, but, you know, it's sad that lives are taken and, and lost. But those lives could, not, could be um, not lost in vain. Um, you know, my prayers go out to each and every one of those families who lost their child, you know. I couldn't imagine, you know, I have a 13-year-old. An 11-year-old. Uh, Nelly, um, I think it's our responsibility to not let these lives be lost in vain. Um, you know, we need to, to let the world know that, you know, we can change together. But I, I'm also a person, um, I kind of look outside the box so to speak. Um, I feel that nothing in this world happened, you know, without a reason to it. Um, and as you stated, Nelly, that people, the children and, um, and, and John, you know, the children at the flagpoles praying and, 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 you know, and then all the moment of silences for each, you know, of the families that is bringing people closer together again. Um, I feel like, you know, yes, we, we have surpassed many things. Um, you know, we have gr grown in this country tremendously. Um, I'll even say for me as a, a, a young black man, African-American in this country to hold the position that I hold today, I consider it an honor. 
So I feel like our country, we, we have moved in the right directions. But like I said, with any group, you always find ways to make it better uh, in any of the negative situations. Um, maybe, maybe both of you can attest to this. Um, I have even been at, you know, a, um, a funeral with my family. And you always hear people say, um, you know what, we got to stop meeting like this. You know, we don't get together like we used to. We don't come together like we used to. Um, let The next time that we get together, let it not be, you know, with a fatality or, or a loss of life be involved with it just let's celebrate on each other and love each other as you know while we have life in our bodies and i feel you know as long as you have life in your body it's for you to choose if you're going to be part of the solution or you're going to be part of the problem um and like you said stated um john um uh, brother if we have guns or not um it's it, it's all starts here you know the way we think and uh, the way we educate, you know, Nellie says she's an educator. Education is very great. And um, many people don't understand and many people, they fail because they don't have the knowledge. Um, and I, like I stated before, I'm a minister, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible talking about, you know, the people perish for the lack of knowledge. You know, you can't fix what you don't know. You can't apply what you don't have in your mind, you know, so. It takes it take people um, to get out and, and let their voice be heard. Um, this is a very serious situation um, and a very serious time that we're living in. Um, like I said, you know, I can't imagine my children, you know, going to school one day. And then the next, you know, next couple of hours, I get a phone call, you know, that my child is no longer living. And they just went to school. They just went to school to get an education. Um, so. My perspective is that, you know, I'm glad to see that the people came together praying. It could have came, it could have been a lot different. It could have unfolded, unfolded differently. You know, it could have been a big riot. People could have been really, really angry. Um, this incident, when it happened, and I saw all the love that was conveyed, uh, people sticking strong together, it really warmed my heart. And even in a negative situation, I feel like, we are moving into a, um, a positive era, but it takes people to make their voice be heard. Yep, and I and I agree with everything that that you said because I, I believe it starts with each individual. You know, it starts with us. You know, empowering <laughs> these kids. You know, because I believe that there are a lot of troubled kids, man, and it's, and, and it's sad that that you would see in today's time that is taking lives to be lost to even start the dialogue. On what should we do? I mean, how many school shootings, ha you know, has to happen be before we put things in place? Like, you know, you, you, every time you turn around, there's a program getting cut, like after school programs, you know, like social programs for the kids, you know, and there's a lot of kids that actually need that attention. And I want to go to Nelly as an educator, because I want to find out, Nelly, what, in your opinion, do you think the kids can do different from a day to day basis? that will create a better atmosphere? So I, I just want to share a little story. When I was younger, there was um, Princess Diana died. And it was a big tragedy. The whole world knew. And I remember there was a concert and uh, some of the people said, let everybody, the whole world see the light that this woman brought into this world and let's go outside and light candles. And I was kind of shaken. It's like, okay, we're going to go light candles. And then in my mind was, how the heck is that helping anything? You know, how we are showing something, we're showing attachment, but lighting a candle after the fact or doing sorts of this this sort of thing doesn't happen uh the platitudes um even that sitting together and praying together is going to be completely in vain if people don't turn around and actually put into action knowing something doesn't help anybody understanding something doesn't help anybody everything comes together when you know what you know when you understand why you know it why you need it and actually go out and start doing what you need to do that action steps are needed so for me 
one thing that we need to as a society to understand kids are hurting because we as a parents and as adults are not doing our job. We are put in front of them as leaders and there's no voting on that. We don't have a choice. We are their leaders. And it's up to us if you're going to be a good leaders or bad leaders. And they're picking up on everything. So the responsibility falls completely, completely on us to show them how things are done um, and how things need to be. Personal example is what matters the most. And it's most inspiring. That is um, fired up with passion, with desire, and most of all, with love about human beings. And I want to ask just a couple of questions before I give my teaching moment, what we can do. Everybody who lost somebody and they cry about them, they lost somebody they really knew and they loved. For other people, those lost life probably have been uh, of the dork child or the bully or the stupid one or somebody who was walking already dead. Uh, we're watching these movies, Walking Dead, but a lot of our kids and we as adults, we walk and we don't live our lives. Uh, we don't do anything with them. And many of these kids and their names and adults probably have been hurt by other children for the first time in their lives and they paid attention to them, that they actually existed. And right now they're crying and they're hurt that they lost a life that meant nothing to them while they were alive. And yes, it is shattering, but I think it is first responsibility to be people with the living while they're alive and do everything what we can do. So what I think, uh, my couple my couple points on this. As adults, children need boundaries. I think there's a mental um, pressure on all the children who are let be free without any accountability, any responsibility. Children, when given healthy boundaries, that means for them that they are loved, that they matter to the adults, to the immediate a circle of people who influence them. Uh, healthy boundaries need clear instruction of expectations and clear description of consequences. Consequences have to be um, related to the offense and equal to um, what they have done. For example, you cannot take away uh, the right of child to go and visit with their friends if they uh, were too long on their iPad, on iPhone. So these things have to be related because when consequences are not related to the friends, people, uh, children get exasperated, they get angry, they are not understood. And they don't make connections why um, they need to be discipled, not punished. And I'm telling, children need to be loved, to be taught everything in, in a lovely way, with lots of love and everything that... Um, makes them feel guilty, uh, gives them pain, shame, uh, ridicule, that is not good for them. That hurts them. Um, and it starts with us. Like we have the choice how to present the teaching moment and help them grow. Another thing, children and adults need to belong. That's why we go and look for community. And that community needs to start at home needs to start at in the classroom. It needs to start in church, uh, in our neighborhoods. If we don't give the children the sense of belonging with us in our family first, in our close friends of circles, they're going to run out and stick it somewhere else where it may not be good for them. And this is where we find the alcohol and drug abuse and sex abuse and all of these things where they want to be part of something big. To, be, to feel part of a loved community. And the last thing that I think everybody needs is to feel significance. Everybody wants their opinion to matter. Everybody wants to be asked. Everybody wants to be considered. So we need to give them consideration of their feelings, of their reality, of their facts. We don't have to agree with them, but we need to listen to them. Nobody listens to these kids. Like they have, they have a whole world <laughs> to experience and to relate. That's, that's how kids learn, especially the small ones. 
nothing is real if mommy doesn't see it. Yes. <laughs> you say, yes, I see that you did that. Yes, that is your life. It becomes real to them when, uh, when, when they're seen and when they're heard. And for me, actions, that, like these are, you know, general things, you know, the, um, to be, to have boundaries, to, to be part of a group, to be a person of significance. These are the general things, but how can we make it? I have found five steps. First, what can you do? First thing, the easiest thing that you can start doing right now, smile, smile. You know, that is the first, give a smile to the world. That is the first thing, be positive. Get out there and smile to the people that you see. People might think you're crazy, but if you walk the street and smile to somebody, guess what? Most of the time people are gonna smile back. Yeah. And that brings positivism in, into their work. Another thing, ask them, how is your day? Or how was your day? My grandma was so in peace. She was telling me there was nothing worse to come home or to come somewhere to a place where there's nobody who cares about you to ask you how you're doing or how you day has been. That's so good. That's good. We, that's what we live for. That's why we are lonely. Ask. Ask. And then you'll be asked as well how are you doing your day. Um, the third thing, give words of affirmation. Um, compliment, encouragement, appreciation. So appreciate for people for who they are. Um, they might have a nice hair, nice clothing, a nice smile, nice. Not find something that you can compliment to give a nice word because for many people, for many of these children and for adults where we work, maybe this is the only good word that they're going to hear all day or all week. We don't know what their circumstances are. So appreciate for who they are. Fourth thing, appreciate for what they do. To say thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for helping me. Thank you. Just thank you. We need to practice uh, the attitude of gratitude and showing that. Um, how this is, this can be applied, every, especially in the family. Thank you for brushing your hair. Thank you for taking a shower if you're a teenager that you don't stink today. Man, that is important, right? <laughs> <laughs> These things to make you, make you aware that, that we know. Thank you for making your room or thank you for putting this cup away. The little tiny things, that, they don't have to be big, but they have to be every day to nurture, nurture love, nurture security, nurture a safe environment and, and nurture the positives and so they can get out and start doing the same with other people. And the last thing, we talk about, you know, doing something with our face, uh, saying nice words, asking people. And the last thing, random kind of uh, act of kindness. Do something nice for somebody without waiting anything in return. That's it. It doesn't have to be calculated. Open the door, carry somebody's bag. That are, I think, main basic, uh, basic things that we need to teach our children. But what I've seen in our society that is so modern, that we are all so self-sufficient, that we don't live with two, three generations. Children don't see how we take care of our elderly. They see nursing homes because it's more convenient. It's easier. It is sometimes maybe it is better for uh, the things that are happening there, but it's not better for the soul of the child that that sees that, uh, okay, when I'm old, I'm going to be kicked out. And then when I'm 18, I'm going to be kicked out. I come from a country, (laughs) it's very interesting, Bulgaria, where... Your mom calls you, I'm 40 years old, and she asked me, do we have socks? Did you eat? What is your... You're a parent for the rest of your life. Like, you don't get to check out when your kids are 18. It doesn't happen. I love it. I love it. And it's and it, that's what it, you have to build the bridge. Like, if as parents we are ready to be the stepping stone for our children they that and they know that 
they know that that we love them no matter what, no matter what. Um, that brings the security and the confidence and builds them up to go and conquer anything and be creators and be um, people of bringing good news and good deeds everywhere. So that's my <laughs> that's my part. <laughs> Thank you guys. Those are very, very powerful, yes. very powerful points. Um, we're going to try to wrap this thing up, but I want to be, before I close it out, I want to give you all about, you know, a minute to a minute and a half to just give your final thoughts on everything from, you know, from the, from the, from the school shootings to how kids are and you know, what they think they should do. I, I want you to take about 90 seconds. Uh, Antonio, I would like to thank you. All right. Um, just to piggyback a little bit off um, what Nelly said was um, in life, like she said, with all the knowledge that you take in, because earlier I was talking about the knowledge that you take in and you, but the most important is not just to take the knowledge in, but it is to apply the knowledge. Um, it's just like our fancy devices that we are using right now. You know, you can apply so many different applications to them. You know, I can go with my phone and I can download apps all day long. But until I actually go in and physically use the app, you know, it's just taking up space. Um, how many of us can say on a day-to-day -day basis we know so much, but we don't actually apply it to our lives? Um, and like I said, with the change in the kids' lives, like you said, it starts with your community. Like you said, the church, your home, and, um, you know, um, I believe the definition to insanity is keep on doing the same thing that you always done, and and with the uh, the, the the attention of getting a different result. Um, I think that's what's going on. You know, mom and dad raised us like this. You know, boy, go go sit down somewhere or get out my face, and then you you have a generation where TV is raising them. What they learn from other kids they're around is raising them and. What they're doing is is, is is crazy. It's not what they're doing is crazy, but it's funny because they are applying what they, what they are learning, but we're not teaching them. So if we was teaching them, the community started teaching them, then they will learn and apply the good things. But because we're not there, because we are so busy, we, we, we're working, um, we, we're making a name for ourselves in our community. We don't a lot time dedicated just for our children and it's very important as parents that we um we allot time for our children um on a day-to-day -day basis um like on my job i work long hours but i try to i try to each and every day um if it's nothing but 15 20 30 minutes and like i was saying earlier it's not the quantity it's the quality that you actually care about how was your day? Um, if and following up, following up is very important to children. Um, I know that was a big thing with me. One, you know, one of your parents to follow up with you. If they told you about an issue that they was having early part of the week, and here it is Thursday and Friday, have you asked them about that problem? Um, my daughter was getting um, a girl bothering her, and. I wouldn't be a good parent if I asked, if I wouldn't ask. Um, so it, how's that going? Um, you know, um, is, is that, 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 is that girl still picking with you or, or, you know, whatever they're going through or how they feeling on a day to day basis, do you follow up with them? And I think that's where a lot of the mental illness come in. They feeling like they're isolated. They feeling like they're in a the world all alone and there's nobody I can talk to. Why would I talk to them? Because they never talk to me. They make more time for their TV. They make more time for their football. They make more time going out and shooting pool with their with their friends. They never, daddy never asked me how I'm doing. Daddy never say, "Hey, baby, you beautiful." Daddy never say, "Son, thank you for going to get my shoes or get me a, a cup of ice because I'm tired. I don't work a long day." You know, a lot of times we feel like they should because, oh, I work, I take care of you, I pay the bills. But they need they need to be validated. They need to feel like they matter. They need they need to feel like they are loved. 
Um, I think it was a, uh, it was more of that going on in the homes, you know, in the community, as Nelly, Nelly stated. I think the world as a whole will grow better because these children, they need to know and feel that they are loved, appreciated, and that they are needed. That's my take on it. And I think as we do that more and more, more people like John, more people like Nelly, more people like me will get out here and not just be the voice. I mean, be the voice, but not just be the person set back and say, like you said, they lit the candles when Princess Diana died, but did anybody go out and do other things? Did they advocate? Did they, did they run campaigns? Did they set up social medias, talk about these things? Um, we can all feel bad all day long, all night long. It can wake up, up out our sleep, but do we do anything about it? You know, do we take a stand when other people say you should have you have to be the one. You have to be the one. And it starts with each and every individual, as you stated, John. Um, I think it, as we do this, I think it'll get better. It will grow more and more of our children. More lives will be saved. More lives will be saved because more people feel love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. Yeah, I like that. It's like that's lyrics to a song, right? Yes, sir. No, oh, okay. Um, this, this has been a beautiful, um, beautiful interview. You know, I, I just want to kind of wrap things up, but, you know, going back to where we must take charge, you know, with our children and basically they're children. They're not adults. I know in, in the United States of America, age 18 is where they can, you know, become an adult, but, you know, we all know they are still children in their hearts and, and in their minds. And we have to be careful because children coming up in this generation, these millennials have it harder than any other adolescent group that I've seen because of social media and because of television and the way things are marketed, social media, television conditions your mind. And it's almost like they're being programmed. So if you see now kids are not social because they're, you know, they have their neck bent and they're in their cell phone <laughs> all day and they're not. Yes. So they're, they're getting in a practice of not being able to communicate how they feel. And it creates this, internal frustration and anyone knows that uh, if you internalize anything you know for a long period of time it'll eventually kill you like if you take a deep breath and hold it you're going to die from not breathing you know so everything was meant to release but the question is when they release it who is there to catch it who is there to listen and be that outlet because we live in a different generation now i'm 34 years old when i was 16 I can't deal with 16 year olds the way they would have dealt with me when I was 16. It's a different ball game because kids are learning what you fail to teach them. They're going to learn online, you know, and like Nelly and like, uh, and Antonio touched on, like, if you don't have time for your kids, someone else is going to have time. I'm telling you, like, if you see it all the time where you got a 13 year old, a 14 year old boy, um, a 13 year old, a 14 year old girl, where they long for that relationship with their mother and father, and they find and replace it with someone else, you know, whether it be a coach and it could be a good thing. It, it could be a teacher. But on the flip side, it could be an older individual that is corrupting them and manipulating them. And I put a post up last night. It's a fine line between manipulation and mentorship. And at that age, when you're looking for love, you're looking in the wrong places. It's hard to ask a child to determine, am I being mentored? Am I being manipulated? Am I being loved or am I or am I being lust after? And that's our job, our responsibility. You know, the difference between a job yes. and, 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 and a responsibility, <clears throat> a job you get paid for. When you go in, you do your work and you get paid. It's 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 a trade of value. I give you value in my work. You give me value and pay. But a responsibility, no matter if you're getting a dime or a dollar or nothing, you must continue to do. And we have a responsibility to create villages to raise these children because it's a serious issue. You know, everybody focuses on the victims and then my heart goes out to every one of them. But what about the mind and the events in life? You know, what was a child going through that they shot themselves in the bathroom? What was a child going through that they came to school and shot numerous people? What is a child going through that they're willing to risk it all their entire life? You know, where they may be gunned down by the police or SWAT team just to get some attention, you know. 
So like Nelly said, we have to take time and acknowledge them. You know, a lot of times when it comes to children, you know, and everybody's seen it, you know, kids are running around and do crazy stuff, but all they want is your attention, you know? So what we yes. want to do with this video and, you know, I'm, I'm hoping Nelly and, and Antonio, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. I want to do a series. I want this to be part one, part two, we're going to talk about a different topic, but you know, we really have to do our job at picking the weeds out of the garden. Yes. Every child's mind is like a garden and it's hard for a flower to grow amongst weeds. Weeds will choke and kill the plant. But the funny thing about weeds, it doesn't need sunlight to grow. doesn't need new, nutrients to grow. It'll grow as long as you let it. So our job is to just plant good seeds of thought, plant good seeds of inspiration, plant good seeds of motiv motivation that one day, the seed will penetrate the mind of a troubled child and make them think, hey, am I challenging the environment? Am I, you know, going to school, speaking to everyone, trying to uplift? Or am I making the environment challenging? Am I continuing to bully? Am I mean mugging people and making that a, a hostile uh, in, in environment for everyone else? So I just want to close that out with, you know, continue to pray. Teach your kids how to pray. Whatever your religious background is, hey, you know, Teach them how to pray in their heart. You know, years ago, they took prayer out of school. And, you know, due to my faith is what I believe that sometimes things happen. But you must continue to pray. You must continue to acknowledge people as individuals with respect. The R word, res respect, and it starts at home. You know, Nellie's an educator, but Nelly is only exposed to kids for a certain amount of hours out of the day. So when they go home, it's up to the parents to continue that, to continue that cycle and to instill in them and pour in them values that's going to take yes. them somewhere in life. So we don't want to hold y'all too long. As as Nelly said, the late night show, uh, you know, we'll be able to <laughs> and, uh, and the other guys. But, hey, you know, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you, Antonio, for, for being on here. And as I always say before I close, in case anybody doesn't know, any video you 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 watch, always say one love, be blessed. I say one love because that's the love of God, the agape love. And I say be blessed because it's your choice to be blessed. One love, be blessed. Thank you.